Hi there, today we wanted to do another quick demonstration on how to use uh, Shalex's dam, it, dam sealer. Um, we get asked a lot of questions, we like to do these instructional videos to, to give people a better idea on how to use the product. Um, we've been called on today to look at a, a, a problematic um, situation with a dam that's been reworked and it's very, very common for issues to occur with leaks with dams when they're reworked, whether it be that they're desilted to make them a little bit larger or a little bit deeper, um, walls are increased, those sorts of things. So we've got a situation today where the, the landowner has actually stripped some trees out. The tree roots were tra tracking right down into the dam itself. And what's happened is basically uh, a deep trench has been cut right through the middle of the dam wall here. All of the tree roots have been ripped out and it's been reinstated uh, with, a, with a large excavator. But the problem in doing that is it's actually broken the seal. So we've come in here today, we're actually, we've got the guys from um, Drone Agriculture. Um, we're actually looking at using a, a drone to apply the product over the surface of the dam today, just to give you an idea of, of how the product can be used in larger uh, dam situations. But in most situations where it's a uh, uh, it's a small farm dam or something like that. We're recommending that uh, people are using something like this. It's a small handheld seed spreader. Um, the, the application and getting consistent application is the most important thing. And we hear people saying that they've grabbed a scoop, dipped into the bucket and they've tried to, you know, throw handfuls of the product. And you can see that as I threw that, there's a lot of dust blowing back and there's larger particles going further away. It's not a good idea to apply the product that way. Very uneven application, very patchy results. So if you're using something like the seed spreader, the good thing with the seed spreader is there's often a trigger and that trigger allows you to open it. And by applying it, it's almost like trying to dust a chocolate cake with icing sugar. You'll actually see where you've got good coverage. But really you need to be doing that from back in the dam, ideally in a small boat or a canoe. You want most of the polymer falling in the deeper sections. There's more water pressure out there where it's deeper and along the, the toe of the constructed wall. So this is a constructed wall. The toe is the, the deepest part of the, the base of this wall. That's where you wanna get most of your polymer. A question we get asked is, is it necessary to actually apply the a polymer along the dam wall? And generally we find that the leaks are in the deeper sections. So you want most of the polymer in the deeper sections. If your dam is very low, you can apply it through as we're going to do today. As the level rises, if there are other areas and more leaks, you can top up an area around. There's actually a dam down there, it's a little bit too far out of shot, but we'll, we'll show you that. There's a dam down there which is full of water. It's been there for a while. So the soil in this area should be good. It should be good at holding water. Um, that has been holding water for a long period of time and this used to hold water until all the trees were ripped out and stripped. But if I come and have a look at this material, trying to get an idea of what's actually here, it's just so bony, it's going to be very difficult to hold water with this. So there is a finer clay component and our polymer works by binding up the clays and silts. So there is a nice clay base here and there is a reasonable amount of clay, but there is so much gravel and rock that the water tracks along the interface between the rock and the soil, especially when it dries out a little bit. Trying to understand why you've got issues or, or where they might be coming from as far as leaks, it really makes uh, a lot of sense. So you can see there's a couple of marker pegs in the dam and what the owner has done is actually measured his water losses over a period of time. So with some large dams, you might actually find that some of your water losses are attributable to evaporation. There's some soggy patches down around the bottom and that's a telltale sign that you've got leaks tracking under or tracking through the wall. Um, and what the, the owner has also explained is that as the water level dropped, there are also patches of the dam wall that appeared quite wet and soggy above the water line. So that's also a telltale sign that the water is actually being drawn through those porous sections. It may be unrealistic if you've got structural problems to solve leaks totally, but you can reduce your water losses to a level where it's acceptable um, without you know, totally reworking the dam and bringing in a contractor. Obviously a drone's not gonna be suitable for most situations, but if you've got larger water holding um, 
uh, or storage facilities uh, with leaks, it's certainly a, a viable option because it allows you to give a nice even coverage uh, and reduce your labour costs as far as getting the product on. Um, and that's going to give you the best result because you've got a nice even uh, covering of, of uh, polymer over the surface. So yeah, we'll move on to the next stage and just show you how we work with the, uh, with the drone. So what we're doing now is we're basically uh, putting a, a slurry, a bentonite slurry over the top of the dammit that we've applied and we're using a fire hose to do that. We've basically got a, uh, a uh, trash can over there and we're recycling the water through to keep it in a slurry and it's uh, a bit easier using something like this to apply uh, bentonite rather than applying the powdered version. But what this is also doing is it's helping our polymer activate. So you can see the, uh, the mess that we're making, that will flock out over time. Uh, it's giving the, the uh, dammit polymer some clay to attach to. So uh, we're also able to spray that over the bank. There would have been some polymer land over the bank and as the water level comes up, we want to try and anchor that in place and this slurry will help us do that. So you can see by pumping it over, it's all going to turn white, but slowly this is going to settle out and that'll give it a, a layer of clay and silt across the bottom of the dam uh, without us having to dump uh, dusty bags of uh, bentonite. 